So today I want to talk about CAPM or the Capital Asset Pricing Model. Yet again, you can check out a few more videos on this topic if you follow it here. It's a little bit wonky, but I want to clarify the differences between the security market line and the capital market line and see if we can't bridge those two concepts together to have a better understanding of what this pricing model is telling us. So let's start off and just assume this is a little bit contrived. So bear with me and pause it if you need to. I'm going to go through the numbers quickly. Let's say we have a two asset uh, universe. That's it. These are the two assets we have here. Uh, now, what we want to do is we're going to do look at a security market line. So the risk number here is beta. That's all that matters. It's beta for the security market line. So we have uh, an asset with a return of nine and a beta of 0.4, a return of 18 and a beta of, of, of 1.6. So the expected returns and the beta are just a weighted average of the two weights of the assets you hold. Okay, what portion of those assets you hold. So for example, if we have 100% in asset A, uh, we would have this portfolio here again, return of nine, beta 0.4. If we held 100% in asset B, we'd have this one here, return of 18, beta of 1.6. If we had half and half, we would have this asset here with a beta of one and the return of 13.3. Now, if we just did this for every possible combination out here, we're going to get something like this. So it is a line. This is a security market line. We did it before looking at one asset and the risk-free rate, but the concept here is very similar. Now, one thing I mentioned in the previous videos is this security market line doesn't tell you that all of these assets are efficient uh, and from a sharp ratio standpoint. So let's look at that. Okay. So if we do what we find here, uh, the yellow represents the sharp ratio, different axis, different label over there. But what we find is that the sharp ratio peaks right where uh, it's that 50 50 portfolio, where it's half of A and half of B. Again, this is a little bit contrived, but the point here is there's only one portfolio that has the right beta and has the best sharp ratio. So let's keep that in mind. So again, here is that 50 50 uh, portfolio having the highest sharp ratio. Now, let's Again, here's the assets we talked about before. I introduced here now uh, a risk-free rate that's 6%. It's a little high, but again, this is contrived to give us an example of what's going on. There are the assets there. So now we're going to talk about the capital market line. So instead of beta as the measure of risk on that x-axis, we are talking about standard deviation. So here again, we have those two assets, uh, You know, 9% return, 10% standard deviation, 8% return, 20% standard deviation. So the return again, is just gonna be the weighted uh, proportion of those two assets. The standard deviation is a little bit more complicated uh, because there's a correlation term in here, but that's what we get. Uh, now, if, if we take every possible combination of assets out there, we actually get this where we have expected returns and standard deviation. We have this nice little curve, it's called the efficient frontier. Okay, now if we were to take, you know, 100% in asset A, that's gonna be this portfolio right here. Again, nine return. 10 standard deviation. If we go 100% in SAB, we're going to be way over here, where again, it's 18% return and a 20% standard deviation. Okay. Now, if we go 80 and 20, then we're going to get this portfolio here, which is actually the minimum variance portfolio. It's the one that has the lowest standard deviation. All of those portfolios below it are not efficient because you can get better return and lower the risk at the same time. You wouldn't want to hold any of those portfolios. Now, what we can do is introduce a risk free rate. And what we're going to do, just like we did before, was we're going to draw a line that's tangent to this curve. Uh, and we're going to see that right there, that's going to be going to be called the market portfolio. So that particular place is the tangent on that curve. And we're going to say, hey, if we if we can borrow, if we can if we can invest or borrow in the, at the risk free rate, then we can uh, improve our odds. So this now changes. So if we look at this, instead of having two assets A and B, we're going to say, no, we're going to have the market and the risk-free rate. So that's going to be risk-free rate of 6%, standard deviation of zero. Okay. That market portfolio, which again was 50, 50 uh, between the two assets has a return of 13.5 and a standard deviation of 11.18. Okay. Now then this part over here also changes. Okay. So instead of having the weighted ass, the weighted averages of the two assets, we have the market, which again is 50-50, and the risk-free rate, that'll give us the expected return. And the standard deviation simplifies super easy because the standard deviation of the risk-free rate is zero, okay? So here we could go. We could say, hey, let's be 100% in the market and 0% of the risk-free rate. We're going to be right there on that orange curve. We could say, hey, let's be you know, nothing in the market, 100% of the risk-free rate. That's going to put us over here. We could say, let's do you know, 200% in the market and then borrow uh, in order to do that. So we're gonna be negative 100% of the risk free rate and that's gonna put us over here, okay? Now, 
One thing that I mentioned again is that sharp ratio. So remember that curve. This is this would be the sharp ratio for that efficient frontier. So it's lowest at that really unattractive portfolio with low returns and high risk. Uh, and then it, go, it improves as you get to the minimum variance portfolio and it peaks right there at the market portfolio. And then it gets worse and worse and worse as you follow the portfolios in that blue efficient frontier. Now we've said, look, now with, with the efficient, with the risk-free rate, we can borrow and invest at that risk-free rate. So now we've kind of moved this whole thing up to that orange line. The only portfolio on there that's worth holding is that market portfolio of 50-50. And we have a sharp ratio for everywhere on that orange line that is at the peak of that other curve. So that is what's going on here between the security market line, the capital market line. If you buy into this theory, the only asset that anybody should hold, the only risky asset that anybody should hold is that market portfolio. And depending on the risk tolerance, they will either invest in the risk-free asset up to nothing, up to borrowing, right? So that's what's going on here with the capital market line, security market line cap. And my hope that makes sense. Please pause this video and go through the numbers if you need to. Uh, next time we'll talk about assumptions because there's a lot of assumptions built into there that make this maybe not practical in reality. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Brian Kosleski.